Hi and welcome. Today we're going to talk about something a little different called fast testing. Now, fast testing is not something that is particularly advanced. It is a way for you to send a lot of input to an application's input to see if it breaks or acts different. So the small slides that I prepared today only have a few slides. Then I'm going to draw a little bit in paint to showcase the actual fast test and what is it all about. And I'm going to show you a program called Burp Suite where I will point you towards one of the tools that can do and perform a fast test. Be, keep bear in mind that fast testing can be done in many different ways. You can even just write your own fast little Python script, just sending a lot of information if that is what you want. So let's start talking about fast testing. So there is a small list here called uh, the sec list, which is a link you should definitely look at. Um, it will give you access to some big dictionaries that will contain loads of different um, fast testing strings for you to send to the application to test for its input validation. So let's just click the link. And what we see here is a repository on GitHub created by a guy called Daniel Meisler. And basically you can say, okay, so I'm gonna, I, I wanna test for um, fussing. And I wanna test for, let's say, something we all know, cross-site scripting, for example. And then you have a lot of different files you can choose from here that contains a lot of different strings for cross-site scripting. So let's look at something here. Let's say bypass strings root logic and look at what's inside. So this one only contains 17 different tries and but it should be enough for the actual uh, bypass string brute force logic. So you can see that it tries to put in these small, I think it's called hyphens, and it's putting some HTML entities, it seems like that inside of it. You can also choose another one. Let's just say the cheat sheet from port swigger. And th this looks more like standard uh, cross script injection. So it kind of just tries, this is a big file. So let me just scroll to the bottom. Um, 6,047 different tryouts. Of course, this will take a while and create a lot of noise and mess in the server. Just going back a bit, you can also say that, okay, I'm gonna do something with SQL injection because I found a login field. I don't really, really know which kind of SQL injection it is. Is it blind? Is it is it um, union-based or is it time-based? What is it, right? Then you, for example, click the, let's say the, the quick one because it's a quickie, I guess. And then just tries a lot of different things like 77 different payloads. Let's be honest, no one does this manually. Whenever you're testing an input field for SQL injection, you're not typing in all of this manually. You just wanna have some program automated for you. And this is what fast testing is all about. So automating the small time consuming processes that can be uh, quantitatively tested, well, this is the way to do it. Going back to the slideshow. And so what is fast testing? Well, fast testing is a method to try and break the application by sending loads of different types of input. Basically, that's it. Imagine that you have a door and you wanna see, so what can this door withstand? Could you knock on it? Well, yeah. Could you hit it? I guess so. Could you kick it? Probably. Could you run into it? Well, yeah, depending on your weight and your, your speed. Okay, so could a hammer break in? That's a different kind of input. It's a hammer, right? What about a, a car? Hmm? Definitely would break the door if a car drove into it, right? So when you, you're testing uh, some examples here, uh, if an HTML input field is vulnerable to SQL injection, you're testing if it's vulnerable to cross scripting, or you just generate a lot of input to see if, well, did something go wrong? And it should be quite easy to see if something went wrong. So um, 
This is what FOSS testing again is all about. There are different ways and methodologies to 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 choose from whenever you do whenever you're working with FOSS testing. This is a six-step methodology. Uh, so the first one is you identify the target. You need to know who you want to perform the FOSS test up against. You need to identify the input. So and identifying inputs in an application, depending on which kind of application it is, if it's a web page or it's a web application, it, same, same in a way, but uh, uh, also it could also be a program dealing with sockets. And when you're dealing with sockets, you kind of need to, well, <laughs> you need to analyze the program and, and maybe doing some, some network analysis to see, well, how can I send some some actual data to a program? Is it listening to some port or, uh, you know, different kinds of ways. Um, then you need to generate the first data. So this is where you need to know what the target is and which kind of input it is. That is the most important part because if you just send a lot of you know uh, crap data without really know, knowing the the receiver, well your fast test is not that directed. It is more like mm, woo, you send a lot of data to the left, to the right, and the back, and the up, and you know, it doesn't really work that way. Executed. Well, that is just executed. Monitoring system behavior, that is another thing. If you have that program running or that website running, you can monitor how it reacts to the fast testing. If not, it can be a bit more difficult. You should definitely pay attention to if it crashes or give you some weird output in some way. Log defects, again, is possible to do if you're running the, the fast test on a program running on your machine. If not, it can be difficult to see the defects depending on which kind of fast test you're doing. If it's a SQL injection, usually they're very visible. If it's a cross site scripting test, it's usually very visible and so on. But it could be other things like some inclusion stuff and it, that doesn't necessarily show just right off the bat. And of course, there is a, a small link below here. I'm gonna put it into the description below to the video. Um, if you wanna play around with Port Trigger's own tools, definitely use the burp proxy, and you're gonna use something called the intruder. Now's the time for me to pull into you to the screen, the burp proxy, and basically what you see here is, if you're not familiar with burp proxy, I suggest you go and watch a video about that. I don't think I have anything at the moment on my channel, but I will at some point soon in the future. Soon in the future means, I don't know exactly when, but it is on the disk. So whenever you are connected to your uh, testing point, this is for web applications primarily, right? Then you use the intruder and in the payload, you just do a simple list and it's one payload set and then you just load it and input it here. And basically what you do is go to your target and then you start the attack. There are some more steps you need to, to focus on. For example, this one here, which I don't think that I can zoom on. I cannot, it doesn't seem that way. So it is a sniper attack. There are different kinds of attacks you can use, but you should use a sniper attack for the particular fast hit that I'm talking about. And then there's something about creating the variables and, and adding and cloning over here. So I suggest you go and watch a video about bird proxy, not to make this video too long. I'm gonna pull out this and pull in my trusted tool called paint. All right, so let's draw an application. This is the this is the application right here. So let's let's assume this, this is a web page, just an example.com. And we notice that there is an actual input right here. And let's just give it the name of login field. Now, a typical login field contains, um, consists of, of two input fields in, in, in HTML. Let's just, for, I guess, simple understanding and simplicity, just draw them here and and then most likely what you will see is some sort of button below telling you to log in something like that, right? So the whole idea is that you take some input from the outside and input here or there. That input itself 
could be coming from your trusty burp proxy. So you probably have a list over here in the burp proxy with a lot of, I wouldn't say random, but a lot of different payloads you can send and they will be sent directly to this field. Depending on which kind of things you're testing for, it could be SQL injection. I'm not that good at draw with paint, so I don't know why I'm doing it, just for you guys, so you can see I draw really bad. <laughs> um, so depending on what happens here, it's gonna send the, 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 the payload from the bird proxy text list, test it on the field, post or get depending on which HTTP method is going on. There's another thing, if you don't know the HTTP protocol, you should definitely go and have a look at that before we proceed with this video. So then it posts, let's just say it's a post for now, it is a login, right? The, the login credentials and we will see what happens when this is being sent in, something is being returned Let's just call it for out because it's a more general term. So what this kind of shows is a big question mark. Did it work or did it not work? Depending on which application you're, uh, you're fast testing on, it will most likely say uh, no such user or password found the system or whatever generic error did not work message they created. So that's really all there is for me to tell about fast testing today. If you are new to fast testing or you're just new to hacking in general, I guess if you're new to hacking, new to ethical hacking, new to cybersecurity, fast testing is probably not the best place for you to start with because it does require some sort of advanced um, understanding of how things work before it really makes sense to you, else it's just a lot of things happening, a lot of data. In the start, whenever you're, 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 you're beginning with, with cybersecurity and tooling or hacking, whatever you're gonna do, it is all about using the tools, understanding how to use them, not so much the actual output or the actual hack. So I, th I hope you liked the video, and if you wish to, you can like, you can, Subscribe to my channel and ask any question below and I will most definitely reply back to you. Bye.